Hello, I Sao Tokisaki presenting about the second and initial Greek prosody. Uh, this is an introduction to my talk. Uh, my proposals are uh, written here. The verb second order is realized at externalization without the head movement from T to C. The verb second order is allowed in languages with the prosody weak strong. Here's a roadmap for us. In the first section, uh, I'd like to talk about the uh, head movement analysis of V2. The second point is an ex externalization analysis of V2. This is my main proposal. The third section is about the typology of V2 and prosody. Alright, a head movement analysis of V2 and its programs. Uh, let, us, let us look at the data first. Uh, this is German. Anna hat gestern der Film gesehen. Hat, the finite verb or auxiliary, is located in the second position, B2. Or, the object can move to the front, then Film hat Anna gestern gesehen. Again, hat is here, in the second position. Or, the other can move to the first position, but the second position is occupied by the, the finite auxiliary hand. So this is a V2 in German. Actually, the standard analysis of our generative grammar assumes head movement from T to C. Let's look at the next slide. Yes, here. This is the uh, base uh, structure of uh, the, the sentences Anna gestern den Film gesehen hat a verb final or a head final structure from here the final hat moves to the C position and after that Anna or gestern or den Film moves to the spec CP so this is a standard analysis uh, assumed in the traditional uh, generative um, analysis in German. And we should be careful about the uh, difference between main clause and subordinate clause. So 3A is uh, a subordinate clause, that's an Gestern der Film gesehen hat. So the finite verb or obituary is uh, located at the end, not in the second position. So uh, standard analysis assume that uh, had moved to C position, so it explains why 3A is um, happens and why 3B is out because had cannot move to thus it's already occupied by the complementizer. That's explanation. But uh, we should be careful about uh, dialectal or uh, language differences, like Danish and Frisian, V2 in a subway clause this occur if it's a complement of a bridge verb like um, say or think something like that and moreover Icelandic and Yiddish and Breton maybe which occurs in all the subordinate clauses so Jan Hama as Sessa Pokus Kureg Hafa as this is a complementizer but still the the auxiliary stays in the second position so the standard analysis cannot explain the data. Actually, there are uh, some uh, theoretical problems with the uh, head movement analysis. The status of head movement in syntax is questioned in the minimalist program. Head movement does not extend the construction, and this is an extension condition violation. And head movement has no effect on semantic interpretation. So is it a movement? But this is the question. Actually, uh, Chomsky 1995 argues that the head movement is not a syntactic movement, but a, a PF movement. However, the nature of PF movement is not clear here. So the question arises, lies, why does head movement from T to C occur only in V2 languages? And what syntactic feature triggers head movement? We have to answer these questions if we assume 
a head movement. So let's look, turn to the my analysis, the analyzation um, analysis of V2. So let's look at number five. Uh, here you see uh, phonological phrases and a hat gestan, then film gestan. And hat is weak because this is an auxiliary, a finite auxiliary. This is weak, prosodically. Gestan is strong. This is a contact word. So weak, strong, prosody is uh, occurs in the second phonological phrase. Then film also gestan at oana also weak, strong. Actually, uh, we, the first week is uh, pointed out by Kanagel or Voskovich, but I'm, I'm arguing that stem initial stress in German uh, is a key word stem initial stress in German, not a phrasal. So this uh, word uh, prosody projects up to phrasal. That's a key point of my talk. Okay. So German allows unstressed prefixes like a geschrieben or something like that, geschreibt, um, like that. And here's a merge uh, of merge operations uh, happened to the V2. So this is a T bar, T subject, B, adverb, B object. There's no linear order here, just a merge of uh, words. And when uh, this structure is linearized, the linearization process are different, different uh, between German and Je uh, Japanese. For example, German externalized T at the second position, and uh, Japanese uh, li linearized T at the last position. It's uh, like a, you know, how does mobiles in the air? if I use the Ria uh, metaphor. And it turns out and stays in some uh, direction. So let's look at the next slide. Here, this is German pattern. Hat, uh, T, and BP, small BP, are sisters. These can be a turn around, can turn around. But in a German case, uh, that allows an uh, initial week, so hat can come to the front of Anna, right? Or the front of BP. That's uh, German. If it's Japanese, I argue that Japanese initial strong language, so time cannot, uh, is re realized here. It's weak, so it should be at the end. Anata or Kino or Sono Ega should come here to make it um, strong. Okay. That's the uh, difference. So this is again German Japanese. So T is here, T is here. And these are the phonological patterns. So Phi 1 is uh, no problem. And Phi 2 here, German allows weak, strong, weak, strong, weak, strong. But if it's Japanese, T cannot occur here. It's weak. So Japanese has to start a, a phonological phrase or words with initial strong. So T is realized, is realized at the end. So that's a difference between German and Japanese. And V last, last order gives an acceptable prosody in G, German. So, other gestern der Film gesehen hat. We have to uh, exclude this uh, linearization. Now, I'm thinking that um, the third phonological phrase, I3, here, uh, is, uh, has some problem. Because this I3 has two weak words at the end. Gesehen hat, der Film gesehen hat. This is a kind of too long. So hat can move or no is can be realized here, so it should be uh, realized here. Then film gesen is uh, shorter. But that's why this is not preferred pattern in German. 
and Japanese. Yes. Maria Akimos no Ega Omita. This is fine because Omita is the auxiliary. It's weak, but this is at the end. Kino, Sono are also uh, are, are strong, so it's okay, right? And Japanese probably does not allow B2 because uh, if uh, the, the the finite B occurs in the uh, in the first position in the second chronological phrase, Mariwa Mitakino. Well, this is not good, Mitakino. Anyway, it's not good because the Japanese has to start with strong element. So Kino Mita is okay, but ki Mita Kino is not good. Mita Mariwa, Mita Mariwa. No good. So Japanese probably is initial strong. Japanese does not have unstressed pre prefixes, in fact. Actually, Japanese probably uh, may have some kind of virtue. A mere Marieva Mita Kimoso no Ego. This is called inversion, but for me, it's uh, another way to externalize uh, the structure. So. Maria Mita, this is weak, strong weak is fine, Kino strong is fine. So there's nothing wrong with prosodically, so it's okay in Japanese. So it's a kind of a virtue, right? Maybe we can think of a, a prosodic constraint proposed by Selkalka and Elfna 2012, strong start. So Japanese uh, observe this strong start. But Japan and Germany, oh no, German doesn't allow strong, doesn't observe strong start. So it allows weak start. This is the uh, main clause versus uh, subordinate clause difference. If you grab it as Anagishtan de Gesenha, this is okay. So I have to assume something uh, like a compactization of a subordinate clause. Subordinate clauses should be more compact than the main clause. And the uh, head final constituent is more compact than the head initial constituent. Uh, that's the assumption. So we should use this one rather than this one. So this is a kind of long, longer than this one. And this is an interesting uh, point in uh, Old English. If the subject is a uh, pronominal, the verb comes at the third position, each even he can do, right? Why? Because of here, each evil he can do. So he is weak, so, and Mac is uh, kind of strong. Weak, strong, it was okay in old English, like German. Okay. And here's the B2 and one stress typology. The B2 order is allowed in languages with initial weak and second strong prosody, Germanic languages, including German and Dutch. English lost V2 in its historical change. Its word stress location changed from stem initial to right oriented due to the influence of French. And Kashmiri Indian language is re reported to have V2 order and initial weak stress. And Romans languages do not have V2 because they have right edge stress in words and phrases. So here are conclusions. V2 order is allowed in languages that have the initial weak prosody in the word, a weak strong. This word prosody matches a V2 order in which a weak V is the first word in the second prosodic phrase here, weak strong. And there is no movement displacing V2 C position. The finite word is uh, externalized in second position in the V2 constructions. And uh, this analysis limits the language variation to phonology. This is desirable in the minimalist program, which tries to redefine word order parameter as externalization parameter. Thank you very much. So I welcome your comments and suggestions. So see you.